thankful for my mom for letting me play sports and letting me have food every night. for my mom because she lets me also play sports and I get to eat every night and morning. I'm thankful for my mom for adopting me. I'm thankful for being loved. I'm thankful for my mama for taking me to church and doing everything that I want to do. Some of them mamas looking nervous when they had them kids in box, boy. I tell you what. <laughs> I say it's about to get real. <laughs> All right, choir, come on. heard that his grace was amazing I'd heard of his wonderful peace I'd heard how his love lifted sinners out of their wretched misery but I didn't know this redeemer I was so lost and hell bound till one day I met him at Calvary and there neath the cross I found that hasn't been told. He's 
more precious than silver or gold. Jesus is everything to me. He satisfies my longing soul.
my case. We can sing an extra one this morning since you don't have to be here tonight. I had a disease no one could cure. I was sick, doubting my soul. I tried to get well. I went to some doctors, but no one could make me whole. And someone told me there is a physician who will treat you lovingly. Doctor, there was no waiting. He took me right in the night. I told him that I had the money, no insurance, but he said that's all right. The sickness I had was killing me daily, so I fell down on my face. He said, "Child." this morning? Anybody? Somebody else, obey the Lord. 
We're here to have church. Sierra, can you sing? Thank you. 
Amen, brother. Appreciate that.
Boy, I'm glad it ain't like that with Jesus. Amen. You ever go buy something and you get it and it's such a deal, you think this can't be no good. It's too cheap. It didn't cost enough. Yeah. And boy, when you get it home, you realize it's the best thing you ever had. Yeah. That's the way Jesus says yeah. 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 It didn't cost me nothing. cost him yeah. everything. Yeah. And it's the best thing that I've ever got a hold of in my life. That's right. And you know what? Some things that will wear out, I, I'm, I'm peculiar. Stephen, you done started something. Come on. I'm peculiar. I'll go buy a brand new pocket knife or a new gun, Avery, and then I'll put it up. I don't even want to use it because I'm scared to death. I'm going to wear it out or I'm going to scratch it. And I want it to last forever. I'm glad the Lord ain't like that. I'm glad you can lean on him and lean on him and lean on him and lean on him and he don't get tired. I'm glad you can go to him in prayer and pray and pray and pray and his ear don't get stopped up till we can't hear our prayer. I'm glad you can't wear him out, amen. He's a renewable resource and his mercies are renewed daily, amen. Thank God for that. I'm glad I know what you're talking about. Anybody else? Amen. Amen, brother. We're glad to have you here, buddy. Glad to have you. No better place to be than the house of the Lord this morning. Man, I love this place. I love you folks. Hey, look around at each other. Look, look, look at somebody sitting beside you. Don't be stranger. Oh, look at somebody. You looking at the blessed people in the whole wide world, I tell you. We are blessed beyond measure this morning, and man. He's worthy of our praise. Anybody else? said it. We ain't got church tonight, so we got plenty of time. We can preach till 2 o'clock. I want all the kids under 18 years old to come up here to the front just, just a second. I won't take much time. You say, preacher, that's a lot of moving around. It's all right. Some of you need to move. You look half dead. Come on. All the kids, just line up right here under 18 years old. Come on, if you got to carry them, carry them. I want them up here. We got plenty of time. Get them up here. You can stay with him, Jesse, if you need to. Take a good look at this. Take a good look at this, amen. Churches are growing. 
We got two or three more on the way. A bunch that's not here this morning. But what I got these up here for, church mothers, listen up mothers. Your responsibility is to run the home. This is your responsibility right here. And besides your salvation, it's the greatest responsibility you'll ever have. Church, look up. It's our responsibility to be a witness and a light and never a stumbling block to these young ones right here. This is the church. When we're dead and gone, if time tarries, this is tomorrow's church. These will be the ones playing the piano. These might be the ones preaching the gospel. These will be your Sunday school teachers. This will be the church of tomorrow. And it's up to us more than anything else. More than anything else. Dad, more than working 70 hours a week. Get your 40 in. Come home. Be with your youngins. The more than anything in the world, we got to get these kids raised up and know what God really is. Like Steve. They, you can ask every one of them. Kids, you know who Jesus is? Y'all know who Jesus is? Sure, they, but I want them to know who he is for themselves. Hey, I know who he was, Gabe Johnson, uh, since I was big enough to talk. But boy, till I went to Calvary and he come into my heart, I didn't know who he really was. I just heard of him. Thank God I'm glad I know him. All right, youngins, sit down. We love you. You youngins, get in here and you worship God and don't let nothing get you out of the house of God. As they're sitting down, we got a lot of young mothers here. Some of you mothers, you had godly mothers that raised you. Good godly mothers that raised you up in the fear of the Lord and taught you the right way. And man, they established you. Uh, they showed you what it was to serve God. Uh, they was an example unto you. And they have uh, molded you in uh, to the godly mothers that you are or that you are to be. But there's also young mothers here that I know their lives. Jesse, Avery, and their mamas didn't raise them in church. Uh, their mamas didn't uh, lead a godly example in their life. Uh, their mothers wasn't praying mothers. Uh, their mothers wasn't holy mothers. Uh, but don't get your head down, children. Uh, let it start with you. Uh, you be the one that when your children uh, grow up, uh, you might not be able to say that about your mama. And if you can, uh, bless her holy name uh, because she raised you up that way. Uh, but if not, uh, let your children at least uh, be able to say that about you. Uh, get in the word. Be a godly mother. Show them what it's like. Uh, to live right and serve Jesus it's the most important thing you'll ever do in your life amen over here in Exodus chapter number one I'll start in verse number six and Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come and let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, uh, so that them up, uh, get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them uh, with their burdens as they built Pharaoh, treasured cities, uh, Pidim, and Ramesses. Uh, but, they multi but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. I like that, don't you? Yeah. And were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with vigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and in brick and all manner of service in the field and all service wherewith they made them serve with vigor. And the king of Egypt spake unto the Hebrew midwives, of which of the name of them was Sephora and Peru. And he said, when, do the, when you do the office of the midwife, if you don't know what a midwife is, there's some here that may not. Uh, that's the woman back then that helped deliver the babies. That was her job. She was a... Uh, she was a RN, you might say. She helped deliver them little old babies. And uh, the children of Israel was waxing great. So uh, Pharaoh comes uh, to these midwives. And, and he said, when you do the office of the midwife uh, to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. 
But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men, children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing? And why have you saved the men, children alive? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Here's where I want to go for a few minutes if God will help me in a minute when we get here. Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. For they are lively and, and are delivered their midwives coming to them. And therefore God dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. You can be seated. I want to preach for a few minutes if God will help me. Uh, or let's turn back over here uh, to chapter number 1. And it said in verse 8, he said, Now there arose up a new king of Egypt, uh, which knew not Joseph. Now we've preached before uh, to y'all that come here on the regular, and some not, that Joseph uh, was as much a type of Christ as anybody uh, that I ever seen in the Word of God. And the Bible said that all these kings, you know, that uh, Joseph, he actually saved Egypt out of famine. He saved, he saved the children of Israel. He saved, he saved Egypt uh, by obeying God. Uh, he went through many trials. He went through heartaches. And he didn't didn't know exactly uh, what his purpose was but he knew that one day uh, that his brothers in the world would bow down to him uh, but God had not yet revealed that to him and he had to endure a bunch of hardship but boy uh, just like when they said over here uh, that the taskmasters uh, put much on them they said the more they put on them uh, the more they thrived amen that's the way it is sometimes uh, with the child of God uh, it takes troubles it takes trials to grow us and make us in uh, to what we are and the more that the world wants to put on us uh, the greater we can be if we'll stay in the will of God but we see that Joseph did this and, and all the kings and the pharaohs uh, they seen his mighty work and they put him over all the land he went from prison uh, to the throne room he was over everything and as long as he was alive uh, man what he said went uh, but time went by and maybe when he died uh, maybe for years brother Mike they talked about him and they sung songs about him and the mamas and daddies would say boy I thank God for Joseph and what he did or he wouldn't be here but then all of a sudden it had been a long time and they wasn't talking about no Joseph no more and there was a new generation of kings that come in and begin to rule and new people and they forgot who Joseph was they forgot what Joseph had done I'm afraid that's the day we're living in right now uh, the world's forgot about who Jesus is uh, the church has forgot about what Jesus has done for them uh, the church has forgot where uh, the Lord's brought us from and uh, we brought us out of bondage amen and brung us into a promised land and he's even got greater things uh, waiting on us. Don't get sidetracked uh, along the way looking at your burdens and looking at the heartaches. Uh, brother, there's a place God's got laid up for us uh, that we can't even imagine how good it is. It's like the song they sing, the half ain't even been told. Amen. And I'm longing to go to that place uh, that I've never seen. I've heard about it. I've heard news about it. I've heard it preached about enough to know uh, that I want to go. Amen. And I've got an enough confidence in my Lord and Savior uh, to know that I'm going, amen. How do you know? Because I got my ticket and Jesus punched it on Calvary, amen. And I got in line one day and bowed down before him and got my pass out of hell, amen. Thank God for that. Let me get on. But we see here that the ungodly crowd, amen, uh, they tried to make it hard on the Christians. We're living in that right now. Uh, they don't want prayer in school. Uh, they don't want prayer in church. Uh, they don't want the churches here. Uh, these churches, it's not fundamental. Uh, they ain't a bother them, amen. Uh, but if you get on the radio and on Facebook, we've been persecuted for it too. Uh, you preach the truth. Uh, you preach it right. Uh, people's going to hate you for it but that's all right. Uh, we're just going to go with God because he's the only way I know. Uh, we had some folks come on here a while back and told one of the members, they said your pastor he gets hateful and mean sometimes on the radio while preaching the gospel and uh, one of my church members said uh, brother I ain't never took it hateful and mean. He said well I ain't saying he don't preach it right but boy he gets a little bit rough and one of my members 
Peter said, well, if it sounded rough to you, brother, it was probably for you, amen, and turned around and walked off. Hey, I thank God for some church members uh, that I got that's got my back. Uh, when I'm up here trying to preach the truth, uh, we can't sugarcoat it. And we're way past that, amen. It's time we cry out and spare not, amen, because I've got lost loved ones uh, that's dying and going to hell. Uh, surely in a crowd this size, uh, these folks right here that don't know Jesus and the free pardon of sin. And if we don't tell them uh, that Jesus is the only way, uh, that he is the truth and the life, how will they know, amen? And I don't want them to forget it on my watch. But it ain't up to just me. It's up to you. But I tell you what, they come over here. Oh, Pharaoh, he got his men together and he said, boy, these children, he said, man, they're growing mighty. They're growing in number. Well, you know why that is? Because God made a promise with an old feller a while back. He said, if you'll walk in my statutes and you'll leave this country, you'll win. And so during with me a while. He said, I'll make your seed like the stars in the sky and the sands on the shore. And he said, you'll prosper. And he said, whatever. Amen. He said, when those that bless you, I'll bless them. And those that curse you, I'll curse them. Do you know that that's still true today? You know that's still true today. But you know what? Old Pharaoh got, he got a little bit nervous. He got nervous. He said, we're going to have to do something about this Christian crowd. He said, they're making me nervous. He said, what if they rise up against us? Or what if we do that? He said, we got to get rid of them. Hey, if you're a child of God, uh, you ought to make the world a little bit nervous. Amen. They ought to be nervous around you. They ought to be uneasy around you. Uh, when you bow your head at lunchtime and you say your prayer over your meal, I know everybody in here, I don't see nobody that's as skinny as a rail. Uh, so I know you're eating good. Good, amen. Every one of these kids that got up here uh, that's happy for Dollywood sports and getting something to eat, amen. That kind of worried me a little bit. <laughs> like they ain't been feeding them sometimes. But thank God we're getting fed now. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I better leave that alone. But I know you're all looking like you're eating good when you bow your head at work. How many of you's? Just shut your eyes and they don't know if you're sleeping, meditating, doing yoga. Amen. I know it's quiet a little bit this morning, but it's all right. I'm getting down there where you live. You know why you bow your head in public and you say your prayer to yourself? Somebody help me. Because you're ashamed. Preacher, I ain't ashamed. I just don't. No. You call it what you want to call it. You ashamed. I bow my head. I say my blessing out loud. You know why? Because they might be somebody in the earshot of me that hear me saying something about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you never know what kind of seed that might plant. I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. We got too many church members. That's a shame. They ain't making nobody nervous. They ain't no difference in their life. Amen. We ought to make folks nervous around us. When we go up and they're talking dirty and we walk by Stephen, they ought to get nervous. They ought to start stuttering a little bit. We ought to have enough God on our life. When we walk by, they shut their dirty mouth. Amen. But we don't. We ain't got that. You know what? We ain't got the power of God on us like we are to. It shows God help us to have the power of God on our lives. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Amen. We ought to make them nervous. It made, it made them Pharaoh nervous. He said, we're going to kill that bunch. He said, we got to. They ain't making me nervous. I'm pondering, Stephen. I preached something the other night. And somebody that goes to church here called me and we talked about the exact same thing. Had to him. If you're a child of God, I'm going to ask you, are you a child of God? Let me see your hand. Yeah. That way you're raising your hand. That way, this is for you. If you can go to places that's not Christian, godly establishments and it don't make you nervous and uncomfortable, yeah. something wrong. Peter, I don't like that. I don't care if you like it. And I don't say that to be mean. I say that to help you. I can't go places I used to go to. I ain't comfortable there no more. 
I can't go down. I'll, you can't go nowhere and eat that they don't have alcohol. The man Matt was talking the other day. I walked in, Texas Roadhouse, it was crowded. She said, sir, it's going to be a 45-minute waiter. You can sit at the bar and eat now. I said, I'll wait 45 minutes. <laughs> Preacher, you're weird. My Bible tells me to be weird. That's your problem. You ain't weird. Well, sir, you're by yourself. You can just sit right here. There's plenty of room. I said, I'll wait 45 minutes. Why would you do that? I don't want to be up at that bar. Why does that matter? You ain't, well, what if I'm sitting there, Stephen? Some old boy comes sits down beside me. He has him three or four, and he starts pushing them glasses over toward my plate. And then somebody walks in, Brother Laddie, and they see me sitting there, four or five empty beer jugs sitting there. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Flee from even the appearance of evil. I like drag racing. I don't go to the drag strip no more. You know why? Because you'll leave there smelling like beer, smoke, marijuana, and everything else. Because that ungodly crowd, they like it better than I like it. Amen. I ain't going to say, listen, the country music is going to send you to hell. But it ain't going to help you spiritually. You're welcome to get in my vehicle anytime you want to and go turn the key on. I promise it ain't going to be on country music. And I sure don't want to go where they're playing it because I'd be uncomfortable. If you're comfortable, you better check up. You know where I'm comfortable? When I'm sitting right here and that choir starts singing and the Holy Ghost starts coming down and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my hands are raising up here and these tears rolling down my face. That gets me comfortable, amen. I like it. I want to get in the thick of when God saved me, he saved me from out of the world. He said, come out from among them and be you a separate people, amen. That's why we ain't got the power of God on us. That's why I said the other day, there ain't many people phone ring anymore or somebody wanting them to pray for them because they ain't got no witness in the power on them. I want people to know. They can say I'm weird. They can say I'm peculiar. But that's what my Bible tells me to be, Mike. And that's what I'm going to be with the help of God till Jesus comes back. Amen. 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 Made them uncomfortable. Said we got to get rid of them. So we got his housewives together, the midwives together. He said, here's what I want you to do. He said, when them Hebrew boys are born, he said, I want you to throw them in the river. This ain't some fairy tale. God's people, Uncle Richard made them so nervous. They said, we're going to have to kill them and get rid of them. Evidently, we ain't making folks nervous enough because they're changing our little old town left and right, and I don't like the direction it's going. Amen. I heard so-called, I'll, I'll use the word so-called, Christians say, yeah, we need to bring all this in so our town can grow. That's the kind of growth you want, we don't need you. Wow. Amen. They said, well, if they let all this stuff come in, he said, well, then we'll maybe get a good restaurant. That's all right, I'd just so need it at the house. My wife's cooking better anyway. Right. Amen. Come on. Had lettuce and onions last night, brother. Love it. It don't get no better now. You can't get that down here at the brewery. They don't know what you're talking about. I'd rather have the good things of God, wouldn't you? As to go out there and mingle with the world and have a spotted garment and then fall before my Lord and Savior and try to call on his name and my prayers go nowhere, amen. But we see those midwives come in here and they was ordered to kill all the male babies. But my Bible tells me that it's better to serve God than man. My Bible tells me to fear God who not only can kill the body but also the soul with hell. You better start fearing God and taking him serious. We just nonchalant. These folks come in here and sit on these pews on Sunday morning and get to them enough for the week and they go out and just live how they want to over and over and over. And I never see no change. I never see no growth. Something wrong. Something wrong. You ain't making nobody nervous at work. You ain't making nobody nervous. I want to make some folks nervous. Amen. I want to make some folks nervous. But you know what these midwives said? We're not going to do that. It's better to obey God than man. Then we get down here. 
verse number 19. Here's kind of where I wanted to go. And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively. I thank God I had a little old five foot tall mama. Here I've got a little five foot tall mama. She lively. She lively. She raised me up to fear her and the Lord. Y'all don't know her like I know her. My sister's here, she'll tell you. Everybody says, oh, you got the sweetest little mama that's ever lived. Yeah, I do. That little woman got up every day. I was in junior high and high school every morning, every morning. Fixed me bacon, eggs, biscuits, gravy, toast, pancakes, whatever I wanted for breakfast every single morning, every day of my life. I didn't realize what a burden that was till I become a dad. Sometimes it's hard to even throw my bowl of cereal out there. It's usually we're going to run to McDonald's, get you a biscuit, and it'll be all right. But my mama did that for me because she loved me. But that same little mama that did that, that little sweet innocent mama y'all see in here, boy, if I got out of line, son, she'd take a hickory and wire me out. I mean, up around your ears. I mean, I was talking to Jesse the other day. Jesse, I mean, he's... He's a tough guy. He's on the SWAT team. I mean, life on the line, he's the man. You, if he still is or not, he's the first one to kick the door in. I mean, tough guy, beating folks up for a living. <laughs> but that boy of his can get up here and pop him hard as he wants to on the leg like that, and it ain't going to do much. But I can stand Jesse up here and take that shirt off his back. And give that little old boy right there a hickory about that long. And he'll run Jesse clean to the parking lot. That's what's wrong with some of you mamas. You too sweet. Amen. Just fire the rod, spoil the child. Mama, I just got all these youngins up here and told you that it's your responsibility to show them the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. Kids don't fear God. They don't fear their teachers, and they don't fear you a bit more than nothing. And it's up to you to put the fear of God in them. I don't care what DSS says. I mean, they got rules that's ridiculous. You can whoop your kid with a belt or something, but I mean, you got to hit them from here to here. If you get here, you're going to jail. If you hit them, son, I was fair game from my feet to my ears. I promise you, I've had switches reach around my ears, son. And whatever I had done, I didn't do it again. Or if I'd done it, I'd done it way better secret than I did the first time. And that's what's wrong with some of y'all children. I love them all. But some of them's disrespectful sometimes. You ain't getting a switch after them. And it's cute right now, and it ain't a whole lot. Y'all know I love little old Gus and every to death. They about live at our house. He smacked me the other day. I popped that hand. I didn't do it hard enough, Andrew. He slapped me again. You know what I did? I slapped. You said, oh, after you're not saying that, you on Facebook. I had to pop him till he was hurting him more than he wanted to hit me. That's called correction. Now, at first, he thought we was playing. And I had to let him know. I started, hey, God will let you play around for a while. But then he's going to smack you upside the head and you probably ain't going to like it. You better get it right the first time he warns you, amen. But we see, let me get on. I'll try to hurry up and let you go. Thank God there was some midwives uh, that seen there was something different about the children of God. Uh, they was lively women. Uh, they was something different in their life. They was something different in their speech. Uh, they was something different if they carried yourself. And them, uh, them midwives said, we ain't going to touch that, Pharaoh. Hey, something different about that. Mamas, you ought to be something different in your life. Uh, that folks see and say, that's a Christian mama right there. You'll know them by the fruit they bear. That's like that little lady I told you I met at the plumbing store. We sit there and talk for just a few minutes. She didn't say nothing about the Lord. She didn't say nothing about the Bible. I was around her about 30 seconds or a minute, and I said, ma'am, you're a Christian, ain't you? She said, how do you know? I said, it shows on you. Then we begin to have church right there. It ought to show on us. If people don't know, I doubt God knows. Amen. 
we ought to be a lively bunch. But we see right here, it, and I'm going somewhere right quick, and I'm going to let you go. I know I done said that once. They said, we're going to kill all these baby boys. Moses' mama had that little old baby. All your mamas has had babies, you know, and even daddies. How in the world, Ricky, can you love something that you'd die for it that you ain't never even met? I mean, I'd never seen Madison, nervous wreck. Kim, pregnant, whiz, new, new to this. Man, I was a nervous wreck, scared to death. Jack Johnson, when that baby came out and they let me hold it, I began to cry. I'd have died right then. I can't explain that love. That's a love that God gives. But that ain't even natural no more what the Bible says. How in the world are these people, they call themselves mamas. They let them, these doctors kill these little old babies. Now these states have got these things that when they butcher an abortion at nine months and the baby's still born, it's called cry till you die. And they let that baby lay on that table and just lay there and cry till it dies. Oh my God. I don't know how God sits on the throne. Oh, he hates to shed the innocent blood. I can't even fathom that. Had an old coon dog one time. Old much, she wasn't even worth having. Had a litter of puppies. I was excited. I ran out there to try to mess them puppies. Dwayne, I'd had that coon dog for a long time. I went to touch them puppies. That old mangy dog tried to eat me up. You know why? Because she didn't want to mess them puppies. Now you tell me that a mama that'll have birth to a child and throw that thing in a trash can. Oh, my God. If God don't save them folks, hell's going to be so hot for them. But thank God we got some lively mamas. Amen. Thank God we got some lively mamas that said, this is my child. I'll die for it right now. Uh, Pharaoh, you can say what you want. Uh, you can make a decree. They can make a decree. We ain't going to pray. Tell your kids to pray at school. If they say something to them, your pastor will go down there. If they tell you not to pray at work, uh, you pray at work. Don't you listen to what this world got to say. We need to be a lively bunch on fire for God, uh, showing the world there's something different about us. Uh, they said, throw that baby in the river. Uh, she said, I ain't going to do it. She said, but I'm going to build him an ark. Thank God uh, for an ark. Amen. That's how I'm here too. <laughs> Cause of an ark. Put him in that little old ark. Don't you know, Jimmy, even though that, she was nervous wreck. I mean, how would you like to take that little old baby right there and put him in a basket, push him out in the Lake James? Be hard. But what if God said to that's where the rubber meets the road. Lord said, do this, and I'll bless you for it. A lot of us would have been like, no, Lord, I ain't going to do it. And you know what? We'd have held on to that baby. You hold on to mama and be their friend and not their mama, and you'll kill them. You'll kill them. She could have held on to that baby, Jack Johnson, and eventually the Bible said after three months she couldn't keep a head. There's a message right there. If you can keep a head, you ain't got it no way. So she didn't have no choice. I could hold on to this baby and it's gonna, they're going to kill it. But I'm going to put it in God's hands. You better put it in God's hands. She put it in that little old ark, pushed it out there, obeyed God. I'm sure she's at home praying, God, I watch over my baby, Lord. I, I prayed that prayer many times myself. How about some of you moms and dads, them little old youngins take off, boy station when they got their license, I'd lay in the floor and cry, God, watch over my babies. Uh, God, watch over them and keep them safe. Uh, Lord, they think they know something, but God, they don't know nothing, Lord. And I don't know a whole lot, but Lord, you know more than me. And I'd pray over my babies. I still pray over them every time Madison heads back up to college. I'm God you get a hold of that wheel uh, God you make her way straight God you put the right people in her life I pray over my babies all the time I want to be a lively daddy amen in their life and I want them to see that on me amen. but she give them to God pushed it out there in the wings the Bible said Pharaoh's daughter seen that little old baby fell in love with him Moses' little old sister said, hey, would you like me to go fetch a Hebrew woman to nurse that little old ugly baby you just found? She said, why, sure. She said, well, I know just a woman down here in this fit to bill. Pharaoh's daughter said, I'll be good. And she said, you tell her I'll pay her for it. <laughs> hey, don't tell me it don't pay to serve God. 
Uh, she could have held on to that baby and not trusted God and we know what the outcome would be. Uh, but she put that baby in God's hands and God said, thank you uh, for your faith. I believe I'll give him right back to you, amen. And I'm going to pay you to do it. It pays to serve God, amen. <laughs> Diane, come to the piano. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And she plays something softly on the piano. This altar calls to the mother's first. Mama, we're living in times that we've never been in before. We're living in uncertain times. I want to ask you, how many of you are a lively mother that the world says, oh, I know that little old woman. Boy, she's a Christian mom. That's right, Daddy. Get down there and pray with your wife. Oh, I love that stuff right there, man. I love that. Are you mamas being all that you can be? Or do you need some help? Maybe you'd like to slip out this morning and say, Lord, would you help me to be that lively mama? Lord, would you help me to be that lively grandma that's got a touch when my kids need help? Uh, they can call on me because they've got confidence. They've seen my life. They some of you, I ain't being mean. The Lord just showed me I'm going to say it. Your kids got in trouble. Serious trouble. Mama, they ain't going to call you because they watch how you talk. They watch how you act. They watch where you go. They watch how you dress. They're going to call somebody else. But it don't have to be that way. Anybody else want to pray? God, help us to be lively for Jesus. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you've not always been the mother that you are to be. But you want to do more. Nobody's looking around. Would you just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, would you pray for me that God would help me to be the mother I ought to be? God bless that hand. He loves you and he appreciates that. And he will help you. Oh, he'll help you because he loves you. And it don't matter how you start. It just matters how you finish. Those of you that raised your hand, would you like to just slip out and come pray? Boy, there ain't no shame in it. Would you like to come pray? Maybe you're sitting here this morning and your life's not where it ought to be with God. Would you say, preacher, would you pray for me? Preacher, would you pray for me that God would help me to get back where I ought to be? Anybody else? Amen. Amen. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate these that come to the altar this morning getting some help and strength. I love to see that from young families because you know what? We need it. We're in a warfare. We're in a battle. And if you think you don't need some strength and help, you're defeated already. But I'm glad I know one, amen, that gives strength to the weak. All right. Once again, I want to thank uh, everybody for being here this morning. Thank all of our visitors for coming. Once again, we love all you mamas and appreciate what you mean to us and what a wonderful day it is. If you still got your mama with you, uh, go somewhere today, tell her you love her, buy her something nice, take her out to eat, spend some time with her. And if not, hopefully she's in a better place than we are, amen. All right, let's all stand and be dismissed. Remember, no service tonight, and we'll be going down to T.J. Addison's Wednesday night, taking the youth choir to sing. Please be praying for that revival.